This is a story about blood and gold, a fortune hidden in the frozen land. To claim it, solve the lethal puzzle before assassins and beasts find you. A soldier, escape artist, and huntress piece together the map, inked on convicts. Can they uncover ancient treasure before sinister forces seek their shallow graves? Only the boldest survive this all-or-nothing race to the end. Glory or death await. In the 37th year of Meiji era on the Lindong Peninsula, the Russo-Japanese War is taking place intensely. Standing out the most in that battle is a guy named Sugimoto Saichi, who is known for his nickname, the Immortal Sugimoto. His body can recover quickly in life and death situations, while his comrades fall down one by one. Amidst the rain of enemy bullets, he charges straight into the siege alone and wipes out every one of them. It's unknown how long it takes, but Sugimoto has been discharged from the military and goes to Hokkaido to look for gold now. The reason is because he has accidentally killed an officer whom he hated. An old drunken man nearby knows that the immortal young man is wanting to make money, so he tells him a story related to gold. A long time ago on the Hokido Riverbank, there was a lot of gold as big as beans concentrated there. If someone went to the river every day, they could have taken back a few kilograms of gold each time. At that time in the past, some Ainu people had stored up tons of gold to fight back against the Japanese troops who had invaded their land. Later, someone robs and kills all the Ainu people possessing that amount of gold and hides it in a secret place. While escaping, he is caught by the police and put in the Abashiri prison, waiting for his execution. In prison, the robber secretly tattoos the treasure map onto the prisoners and promises that if anyone escapes, he will divide half of the treasure for them. However, to decrypt the map, all of the tattoos on the prisoners are needed. Some low-ranking military officers know about this and take those prisoners out, aiming to seize the treasure, but this is also a chance for the prisoners to escape. They kill the guards, then disappear into the forest, and now the treasure still remains a mystery. After the story ends, the drunk old man passes out. Sugimoto thinks it is just a fictional story, then dozes off beside the fire. In his dream, the immortal young man remembers his comrade's last words before death, asking him to take care of his wife and children. Waking up from the dream, Sugimoto sees the old man from earlier pointing a gun at him, intending to kill him. Now he knows that the story he heard earlier is actually very credible. With his military background, Sugimoto easily overpowers the situation and obtains the gun, chasing the old man away. Shortly after the old man has not gone far, he becomes food for a bear. When taking out his wallet, Sugimoto discovers a strange tattoo on his body. So the old man is one of the escaped prisoners in the story. Afraid that the bear will come back to eat a part of the treasure map, Sugimoto takes the corpse and leaves. Not long after he leaves, the bear appears and attacks him. At the moment when the immortal young man is about to become food for the bear, an arrow with poison comes and shoots the bear down. The person who shot that arrow is a girl named Asirpa from the Ainu tribe. After examining the bear, Sugimoto knows that the old man was killed by another bear. Asirpa advises him to leave the old man's body there since the bear would not allow anyone to take its food. However, Sugimoto is very keen on deciphering the treasure map so he cannot leave the corpse there. He wants to keep his promise to his deceased friend, so he tells Asirpa the story about the treasure and begs her to help him. After hearing it out, the Ainu girl agrees to help Sugimoto protect the wallet because her father was one of the Ainu people killed in the gold mining case that year. And when looking through the tattoo on the old man's body, Asirpa knows that from the very start, the robber had no intention to share this gold with the prisoners. In order to decrypt the map, skinning all tattooed people were needed. That night, the bear returns to reclaim its food. As it charges at Asirpa, a wolf appears and protects her. Taking this chance, Sugimoto shoots and kills the ferocious bear. With the gun in his hands, the immortal youth then skins the old man's body to obtain the map. He proposes to Asirpa that they cooperate to find the treasure. He wants the money and she wants revenge for her father. Though their goals differ, the path is the same. If she agrees to cooperate, they will be like a tiger growing wings. The first steps to the treasure hunt, Sugimoto determines the group of prisoners with tattooed codes will take advantage of crowded cities to hide. The first place they go is Otaru, a port city nicknamed the Northern World City of Hokkaido. While asking the locals about information on the tattoos, a man notices them and secretly follows them into the woods, not knowing he has fallen into Asirpa's trap set beforehand. As expected, 
This man also has a tattoo related to the treasure. After interrogating him, Sugimoto learns that the group of prisoners have been killing each other during their escape. This one got lucky, escaped, and chose to live in hiding in this city. Because Sugimoto had promised Asirpa not to kill recklessly, this prisoner narrowly avoids death at the hands of the Ainu girl. She simply draws his tattoo on paper rather than skinning him. Asirpa asks about the identity of the person who tattooed him. He says it was a man called Noparabo. Before they can ask more, a gunshot kills the man. Sensing danger, Sugimoto and Asirpa immediately flee. The one who fired was Ogata, who also urgently chases after them. Unfortunately, he falls into a trap set by Asirpa, getting his gun stuck in a tree. Seizing this chance, the immortal youth charges forward to attack, but Ogata's martial arts skills are extraordinary. In an instant, he removes the firing pin from Sugimoto's gun, leaving him unable to shoot. Looking at his uniform and insignia, Sugimoto recognizes this man is from the notorious 7th Division, said to be the strongest unit in the army. Still, the immortal guy manages to overpower him in one blow. Sugimoto is about to finish Ogata off when Asirpa stops him. This unintentionally gives Ogata a chance to counterattack and escape. But before he gets far, Sugimoto hurls the gun straight at his head, knocking him into the nearby river. Assuming the soldier is dead, he leaves with Asirpa to enjoy their evening. Little do they know, Ogata was fortunately found and rescued by his comrades, surviving against the odds. The next day, Sugimoto and Asirpa catch another prisoner with a tattoo, following the same method of drawing it on paper and interrogating him for more related information. But this one is extremely tight-lipped. Taking advantage of Sugimoto and Asirpa busy hunting a rabbit nearby, the prisoner subtly loosens his ropes and escapes. His name is Shiraishi Yoshitake, a prison escape genius known as the Escape King. Sugimoto soon discovers the prisoner escaping and gives chase. Unfortunately, the frozen river's ice sheet collapses, dropping both men into the frigid water below. They have the next 10 minutes to start a fire, or else they will die from hypothermia. The immortal youth takes out his lighter, intending to ignite it with gunpowder, but the powder has fallen into the river, none remaining. He hurriedly dives into the water again to search for it, as it is their only chance of survival. Seeing this, Shiraishi offers a deal. He will help Sugimoto find the gunpowder in exchange for letting him live. With no other choice, Sugimoto agrees. The escape king then vomits up a bullet he had swallowed earlier to use. After successfully lighting the fire, Shiraishi reveals everything he knows. There were 24 prisoners tattooed in total. The only one he knew of was their leader, Hajikata Toshizu, a samurai from the late Edo period. Having said this, the escape king bids farewell to the immortal youth and takes his leave. Today, Sugimoto and Asirpa continue their journey to find the treasure. He realizes someone is watching them and carries Asirpa away to flee. The group chasing them are Ogata's comrades from the 7th Division. When he knows they can't escape, the immortal youth gives Asirpa the map pieces and tells her to surrender them if captured. After separating, four soldiers split up to catch them. The one chasing Asirpa is a skilled hunter named Tanigaki. At a glance, he knows the girl intentionally left fake footprints and is hiding in a nearby tree. Upon seeing Asirpa's drawings of the tattooed skins, the soldier immediately points his gun at her. Just as it seems the Ainu girl will be caught, the wolf that previously saved her appears again, attacking Tanigaki and rescuing Asirpa. On the other side, Sugimoto has also been caught by three soldiers who are about to take action against him. Taking this chance, the immortal youth leaps into a nearby bear cave, prompting the soldiers to open fire into the cave. This inadvertently provokes the hibernating bear inside. With its huge body, the bear beats the soldiers up nicely and kills them, though the last one manages to shoot the ferocious bear to dead before dying. Sugimoto then crawls out from the cave, a bear cub in hand. Indeed, the Ainu were right that brown bears will not kill those who enter their dens. Asirpa is playing with the wolf when Sugimoto finds her. Seeing a stranger, the wolf flees. Looking at the soldier's broken leg, she knows he can't go after them. So she lies to Sugimoto that the man is dead. In fact, after they leave, Tanigaki regains consciousness. With the soul of a hunter, he is determined to capture the beautiful white wolf at any cost. Sugimoto is brought by Asirpa to her village to return the bear cub to the Ainu to raise. 
Aserpa is currently living with her grandmother, Hootsi. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Sarumi of the 7th Division has ordered his men to kill their superior officer for daring to insult him. Due to a cannonball blowing off part of his skull earlier, Tsurumi is no longer mentally stable. At the same time, Hijikata has approached a prisoner named Ushiyama the Invincible to discuss plans for finding the Ainu's gold. He has figured out a method to copy the tattoo codes using oil paper transfers, planning to gather those with the tattoos to fight the 7th Division without having to kill each other. Currently, besides Sugimoto's group, the 7th Division and Hijikata's gang are also after the Ainu's gold stash. Spending a day with a serpa in her Ainu village, Sugimoto learns that the white wolf Retar who previously saved her was found by a serpa's father while hunting and brought home as a pup. Since her father's death, Retar has stayed by a serpa's side, hunting with her. Sugimoto also realizes a serpa is an integral part of this village, especially to her grandmother, so he decides not to endanger her anymore. The next morning, Sugimoto silently leaves the village for Otaru City, asking around about the tattooed men. While eating noodles, he is suddenly captured by 7th Division soldiers and taken away. Lieutenant Tsurumi personally interrogates Sugimoto about the tattooed skins, but he denies everything. Still, Tsurumi recognizes him as the immortal, Sugimoto based on Ogata's prior pursuit. Unable to persuade Sugimoto to join him, Tsurumi mercilessly shoves a skewer into his mouth. Yet Sugimoto does not yield. When a serpa finds him gone, she sets out to search using his sock's scent. Ritar tracks him to a room, but it turns out to be Shirai Ishii there, having accidentally swapped socks. According to information Shirai Ishii knows, this morning there was news that a scarred man was taken away by 7th Division soldiers. Hearing this, a serpa immediately forces Shirai Ishii to lead her there. Unexpectedly, as soon as he opens the door, the escape king flees, but he is dragged back up by Ritar. At the same time, two soldiers who were beaten by Sugimoto earlier have come seeking revenge. Despite the dangerous situation, the immortal youth can still fend off the two soldiers at once. His mouths continuously cry out that he is the immortal Sugimoto. Fortunately for Sugimoto, in a critical moment, the 7th Division soldiers timely appeared to intervene. After this event, Lieutenant Tsurumi ordered his subordinates to restrain the tattooed twin brothers from approaching Sugimoto. Since they haven't found the human skin map that Sugimoto is hiding, they can't let him die yet. Meanwhile, Asirpa and Shiraishi have also found the base of the 7th Division. But before rescuing Sugimoto, Asirpa had to strike a deal to share the treasure gold with him if they find it. Entering these places is easy for Shiraishi. He just needs to rub some bear fat on himself. Shiraishi successfully sneaks into the prison room and passes a lockpick to Sugimoto. Outside, the horses sense Ritar's wolf smell and panic, causing a commotion with the guards. Thinking there are horse thieves, the guards rush to investigate. Seizing this chance, the twin tattooed brothers approach again to kill Sugimoto for revenge. One stands guard outside while the other enters wielding a spear to confront the immortal youth. However, the would-be attacker has now become prey. Lieutenant Tsurumi arrives at the prison room and finds one of his soldiers dead, while Sugimoto has been stabbed with his intestines spewing out. Not yet knowing the location of the human skin map, Tsurumi orders his subordinates to take Sugimoto to the best hospital to save his life. After a while, the lieutenant realizes something is off about the corpse. The organs on Sugimoto's body actually belong to the dead soldier. On the outside, the immortal youth has beaten his two escorts and stolen a horse to escape. Thanks to Asirpa and Ritar's assistance, Tsurumi cannot pursue him. When reaching safety, Sugimoto and Asirpa have an awkward reunion after he left her behind. Seeing this uncomfortable interaction, Shiraishi jokes they are like a married couple fighting and pushes them into a room to talk it out, frustrating them further. Meanwhile, Hijikata's prisoner gang has started conquering other local gangs, eliminating any non-participants who know too much about the treasure. The next day, Sugimoto and Asirpa discover Ogata's footprints in the forest snow. Asirpa immediately realizes he likely survived. The soldier was saved by an old hunter known as the greatest bear poacher ever. His name is Nihei Tetsuzu. At dawn, the 7th Division soldier Tanagaki and the hunter Nihei have started their wolf hunting expedition. Based on the fear of Tanagaki's Ainu dog, they know they are in the territory of the beautiful white wolf. Meanwhile, Sugimoto and Aserpa are still unaware of the impending danger. After hunting a large deer, they notice Ritar acting oddly. 
A Serpa realizes he is warning them someone is coming. After storing enough meat for a few days, they quickly hide nearby. They learn the soldier Ritar attacked before is still alive and with an old hunter. Sugimoto meets up with Shiraishi again. Smelling the deer meat, Shiraishi buys liquor in preparation to join them for a feast. Over food and drink, the escape king mentions hearing about a tattooed man from a fur trader in town, a renowned bear hunter named Nihei. Shiraishi also heard this man is now after Ritar's beautiful white fur. Realizing Ritar is in danger, the next morning, Nihei uses an advanced hunting technique called tree camouflage so the wolf cannot detect his presence. However, he doesn't know Sugimoto's group has intervened, causing his shot to miss the target. The immortal youth suddenly appears behind the old hunter, pointing a gun at him. But unfortunately, Nihei's Ainu dog unexpectedly knocks the gun from his hand. Seizing this chance, the old man pulls out a knife to kill Sugimoto, but then gets several of his fingers cut off. While Sugimoto is fighting fiercely with Nihei, Shiraishi manages to grab the gun from the Ainu dog. However, Tanigaki captures a Serpa as a hostage, threatening them to surrender. As they don't want the girl harmed, Sugimoto and Shiraishi stop resisting and get captured. Nihei doesn't want a Serpa to see the bloody scene of torturing Sugimoto and Shiraishi, so he tells Tanigaki to take a Serpa far away from there. When Tanigaki returns, the two men have disappeared. Shiraishi's escape artist skills live up to his reputation. Tanigaki takes a Serpa away, but inadvertently falls into an Ainu trap. To save his own life, he has to free a Serpa and ask her to cut his poisoned flesh to stop it spreading. Before a Serpa can leave, Nihei captures her, knowing the Ainu girl is the best bait for the white wolf. As expected, Ritar rushes in, biting Nihei's hand to rescue a Serpa. But Ritar doesn't know Nihei's bullet is still in the gun, ready to kill it. Just as Ritar seems doomed, another gray wolf suddenly appears, biting Nihei's neck from behind. Now a Serpa realizes this wolf is Ritar's mate, who has a lovely family. With everything resolved, Shirishi takes the poisoned Tanigaki back to the Ainu village for treatment. Sugimoto skins Nihei's tattooed hide, gaining another piece of the treasure map. The next day, while visiting brothels, Shiraishi bumps into Ushiyama, another prisoner with a tattoo who now works for Hijikata's gang. Seeing his acquaintance, Ushiyama chases the escape king, who flees for his life until some 7th Division soldiers nearby come to his rescue. At the same time, another explosion occurs at a bank, catching Lieutenant Surumi's attention. Arriving there, he finds Hijikata has already left. What Hijikata took was not money, but a katana sword called Izumi no Kami. Through some prostitutes, Shiraishi obtains clothes belonging to Ushiyama the Invincible. He shows these to Sugimoto and Asirpa to prove he is not useless. With the Ainu dog, he goes searching for the Ushiyama. However, while spying, Shiraishi is caught by Ushiyama again. To save his life, the escape king allows Hijikata to copy his tattoo with tracing paper. He also reveals his accomplices and agrees to split the treasure later. After being released, Shiraishi informs Sukumoto's group that the next tattooed prisoner is Henmi a deranged killer who murders people for twisted amusement. Based on recent information about victimized fishermen, the group heads to the coast to investigate. They coincidentally meet a Serpa's uncle, Achabo, whale fishing. While chasing a whale, a fisherman falls into the frigid sea. Sugimoto pulls him ashore to warm up. However, neither he nor a Serpa realize the one they rescued is actually Henmi. In changing clothes, a fisherman sees Henmi's tattoo and is silenced. Now Henmi lies in wait for his next target the immortal youth himself. Henmi lures Sugimoto and Asirpa to his home for a meal, intending to attack Sugimoto there. While going to the bathroom, Asirpa discovers the corpse of the fisherman from earlier and realizes danger is coming for Sugimoto. But when she returns, the killer Henmi has already lured him away to make his move. Unexpectedly, where Henmi takes him is guarded by 7th Division soldiers. Without hesitation, Henmi swings his blade, quickly killing two soldiers and reveling in his twisted pleasure. The gunshots alert the other soldiers, forcing Sugimoto to flee with Henmi to the beach. There, he coincidentally meets up with Shiraishi again and gets saved by Asirpa's arrow, narrowly escaping Henmi's stabbing attack. Knowing Henmi is his target, Sugimoto wildly swings his blade. Despite being repeatedly stabbed by the immortal guy, Henmi is extremely delighted to die by his hand. When Lieutenant Tsurumi's troops reach the beach, it is too late. Henmi's tattooed skin now belongs to Sugimoto's group. At the same time back at the Ainu village, Tanigaki is attacked by the traitorous soldiers Ogata and Kohei, 
but luckily, only lightly wounded. Not wanting to endanger the Ainu people, he lures the two soldiers into the forest, determined to teach them a lesson using the gun he obtained from Nihei. Facing a winter hunter like Tanigaki puts Ogata and Kohei on high alert due to the snowy forest environment, which is to Tanigaki's advantage. Although injured, Tanigaki uses the brown bear tracks in the snow to locate where a bear carcass is hidden. This will be the most dangerous yet safest place for him. After a freezing night, Ogata and his gang find the fireplace where Tanigaki rested overnight. Kuhei stealthily approaches as a scout, while his teammate watches the perimeter. Unfortunately, a provoked bear suddenly appears, swatting away Kuhei's right ear. Forced to save his teammate, Ogata fires his gun, revealing their location. Seizing this chance, Tanigaki shoots at Ogata, but the bullet hits his telescope, saving his life. A 7th Division soldier appears, telling Tanigaki that Tsurumi's army is coming for the two traitors. Ogata promptly shoots him dead. Tsurumi's troops arrive just in time, so Tanigaki and Ogata halt their battle and retreat. Kauhei is unluckily captured and gets his remaining earlobe cut off by the deranged lieutenant. But Tsurumi doesn't kill him, inducing Kui's hatred of Sugimoto to reveal other defectors. Meanwhile, Sugimoto's group coincidentally encounters a man named Nispa while fishing by a stream. Asirpa recognizes him as her late father's close friend. He also remembers Sugimoto's infamous name, having been an explosives engineer in the army. From him, Asirpa learns Hijikata recently came to her Ainu village looking for her. Oddly, he knew her Japanese name Asuko, which only her deceased parents were aware of. Moreover, the gold thief Noperabo had told the prisoners that Asuko was an otaru. This implies the one who stole the Ainu's gold was Asirpa's father. Now, now the group needs to go to Abashiri prison where Noperabo is held. If he is truly Asirpa's father, they won't need to search for the tattooed skins anymore. Nispa also wants to join this journey, not for the gold, but to see the remainder returned to the Ainu. Having decided, the group hurriedly returns to the village, mounts horses, and heads straight for the Abashiri prison at the end of the earth. At the Sapporo World Hotel, Ushiyama the Invincible checks in, lusting after the attractive female owner. His fun is ruined when Sugimoto's group also arrives to book rooms. Shiraishi is quite aroused upon meeting the beautiful owner, but neither he nor Ushiyama realize she is actually a male prisoner with a tattooed map. A doctor named Kanoho enjoys cross-dressing. Yanagawa's real goal is to seduce Ushiyama and take Asirpa's lovely eyes, but his plan is disrupted by Shiraishi persistently tailing them, worried Ushiyama may encounter the deviant. So the hotel owner decides to send Shiraishi to meet his ancestor first. When Kano pulls a hidden switch, Shiraishi falls into an underground torter chamber. There he encounters Ushiyama, who fell in drunk. Mistaking Shiraishi for the owner, they nearly has an awkward affair. Before Kanotri's extracting Asirpa's eyes, Sugimoto has intervened in time. Unable to defeat him, Kano tricks Ushiyama and Sugimoto into battling each other. During the fight, Sugimoto falls into another pit. Realizing he's exposed, the hotel owner activates a mechanism to destroy everything. In the basement, Sugimoto finds large amounts of alcohol being released through a secret conduit, followed by flames erupting. The Sapporo World Hotel is blown sky high. After the explosion, only rubble remains. Sugimoto's group miraculously suffers no casualties. Ushiyama and the hotel owner are nowhere to be found, seemingly having survived the powerful blast. Early in the morning, Shiraishi sneaks out to give Ushiyama a copy of the tattoo from the deranged killer Henmi that Sugimoto's group had captured before. He gets taken to meet Kanoa and learns some extremely important information. Afterwards, Shiraishi continues pretending to be part of Sugimoto's group as they go to Naganuma to hunt and raise funds, since the escape king had used up their money gambling. Conveniently, they also stop by Asirpa's Ainu village to visit her relatives. There, the group meets a shamaness named Inkermat who can supposedly see the future and past, and is revered like a deity by the Ainu. Through conversation, Inkermat already knows their goal perfectly. She then does a fortune reading for the immortal youth's group using a fox skull, saying the inverted teeth signify an ill omen. Inkermat advises everyone they should stop before it is too late. Seeing this, the Escape King half believes it and bets on upcoming horse races based on her predictions, which eerily prove accurate. When the results match her fortune telling each time, Shiraishi believes in Inkermat's prophecies and bets all his money on horse number six. 
The result deals him a painful blow, as Nispa is the one controlling horse number three and wins. At that time, Inkermat tells Aserpa that she has beautiful eyes just like her father, then disappears without a trace. Inkermat's identity remains a mystery. Meanwhile, after evading the 7th Division's pursuit, Ogata coincidentally encounters Hijikata's gang. He hands over a piece of tattooed skin and joins under the old man. When he reunites with Sugimoto's group, Shireishi has now revealed the information he got from Yanagawa. The old doctor said that in a house in Yubari there is a corpse and a tattooed skin. Hearing this, the immortal youth and everyone immediately agree to head straight there. After all, their group already has five tattooed skins, so the best plan is still gathering them. They cannot know whether Aserpa's father is truly Noparabu or not, so their journey to find the Ainu's gold has stalled for now. Who knows what challenges Sugimoto the Immortal and his comrades will face on the thorny path ahead? For now, stay tuned for the next part coming in a few days. See you next video, everyone.